My brother sent me a video of code literally writing itself with user input. That's crazy. We'll be talking about if this could take jobs from potential programmers and what the future of AI in the workplace looks like. Let's get right into it. So this idea of code writing itself is actually called metaprogramming and it's quite interesting. Metaprogramming is basically the ability for a piece of code to take other code as its input and the code is expected to analyze, read, and generate new pieces of code with, for example, GitHub repositories as its input. So the most famous example of metaprogramming actually being implemented with AI is something that Microsoft and OpenAI collaborated to do in this virtual seminar. Let's take a look. Kevin Scott, the lecturer here, explains how he can input uh, a function like is palindrome and the code will actually be able to autocomplete the function and take an is palindrome function from a GitHub repository and generate that within the code. And that's actually fascinating. But what does this mean for AI in the future that can generate code? And is metaprogramming actually being realistically used in the field today? So the field we're talking about code writing itself is called metaprogramming. And it's kind of new to the field of AI and coding, as there's not a lot of information on how we can use metaprogramming. And it's very much in the research phase. And the most famous instance that we have of metaprogramming actually being implemented in writing Python scripts and code is with something that Microsoft did with OpenAI. And you can see this right here. This time, I'll write an order class composed of items. I pasted in some code defining the item class and the properties of my order class. Now let's write some methods for the order class. Let's start by writing a method to compute the total price. But let's add a twist. Let's apply a discount to items that are palindromes. This is amazing. Let's see what the model suggests. It helpfully writes a comment string for us. I was so... Ah, but that's not quite right. I only wanted the discount applied to palindromes, not to the whole order. Let's edit the comment to clarify what I wanted. Compute the total price and return it. Apply a discount to items whose names are palindromes. Let's try again. This is cool. So far, so good. Great, that's Wait much better. So from a perspective of someone that's hiring you on a job, metaprogramming has its advantages and its disadvantages. So the first advantage is that it's very useful and it can make a lot of workarounds a lot shorter and make coding a lot easier for you and your colleagues. But a disadvantage is it's not really necessary to learn metaprogramming and therefore some of the developers you're going to be working with in a group might not be able to understand what you're doing. And that's an issue. Because if your fellow developers don't understand what you're doing, it might be an issue to when, when you're not working at the company and you have code that is using metaprogramming and other people don't understand how to use it, it's basically gonna be unusable. And that's an issue. So now let's look a little bit about the bigger perspective or the bigger issue here. And I'm not saying metaprogramming is bad because it's almost magical in the way that it works. It's very hard to understand, but there are things that we need to consider. If you're trying to learn how to build models that use 
metaprogramming to their advantage, it's key to understand these two things. Number one, metaprogramming is almost magical and it's very unpredictable. So it could be producing these really very um, high standard or very unrealistic performance. It could be uh, producing very high accuracy models, very high accuracy results, but you don't actually understand what's going on. And number two is that the model doesn't really work with other elements or certain elements of the language you're working with. For example, in C, you're going to have a hard, tra hard time using metaprogramming with other elements of the language, and it's very hard to execute the same thing in Python. Metaprogramming presents a very harsh reality for those who are trying to abridge different parts of the language to achieve a certain goal. Now, I see metaprogramming as like machine learning or neural networks 10 years ago. 10 years ago, there was very minimal research. These uh, models were producing insane results and no one knew how it was working besides maybe Andrew Ng. But let's be honest with things like these algorithms and these models that are very complex and how they function, we need a lot more research to validate the fact that it's actually going to help us in a professional setting. For now, it looks like metaprogramming is more suitable for the developer who's trying to play around with his programs, but it doesn't look like it's going to work in a corporate setting. But that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Let's talk a little bit about what metaprogramming means for the future. Metaprogramming is going to play a huge role in the development of AI in the next 30 years, but will it take all of our jobs? For now, no. There's a lot of research that's required to be done, a lot of people and developers that will be, a will be able to play with the method. And after a bunch of years of research and a bunch of people trying to implement the models in different environments, we'll be able to get a better insight of how metaprogramming will influence AI in the future. But for now, don't worry, your job isn't gone yet and you can still be a software developer. Thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you found it useful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. We'll be coming to you with a live stream on Friday and another upload on Sunday. Peace.